our call to worship is found in Psalm 118.1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Our choir will now lead us in our praise song.
How great is our God. How wonderful is our God. How mighty is our God. How kind is our God. How patient is our God. How loving is our God. For he has smiled on us this morning. Welcome each and every one of you and those who are listening on the radio and on the internet. We pray that God will smile on you this morning and you will know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Our responsive reading is found in your bulletin taken from Psalms 34, 1 through 6, the New King James Version. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Those are they that boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord did it, and saved him out of all of his trouble. The Lord will save all who call upon his name. Glory to God.
great is our God. God is great and greatly to be praised. How great is our God. Great love, great compassion, great mercy, forgiveness, protects us from ourselves, from others. Great salvation, great redemption. God is great and greatly to be praised. We bow with me, pray with me and pray for America. When I was growing up, there was a term that I used to hear. She had a nervous breakdown. Boy, he had a nervous breakdown. America is on the cusp of a social breakdown. And the, the uncivility and the, the, the lack of respect for authority and each other. So as we are in God's house, my, my father's house, house of prayer, Pray for humanity. Almighty and everlasting God, the giver of all good gifts and graces, we thank you for who you are. You're great, never changing, always present, always watching, always seeking. We thank you for who you are in sending us here this morning. If my people, you said, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my presence and turn from their selfish and wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, your sin, and heal the land. Father, we thank you for your great love and your blessing over our lives. Thank you that your favor has no end, but it lasts for our entire lifetime. In the name of Jesus, who is praying now to you on the right hand, forgive us for sometimes forgetting that you are intimately equated with everything that we think, say, and do. Father, I'm coming and bringing and interceding for men and women, leaders, humanity, people. Forgive us for sometimes forgetting that you are the authority. You are the creator of all that is invisible and that is visible. Forgive us, oh God, for not following and complying with your word. You are merciful, kind, but we have taken you for granted. You are coming. All the signs are around us. Heaven is open and your spirit is being poured out on all flesh. We see and we hear and you are working with us and, and through us and through others, but God, we are still hard head, stiff neck, and self-centered. Forgive us, and in your anger, oh God, be merciful. We ask that you would, that we would be able to walk in your blessing and, and, and your goodness today. That you, we would be able to, to hear you and let you guide us. But Lord, help us. 
with an attitude of gratitude and a spirit of thanksgiving. Thank you for bringing us thus far through this pandemic, ongoing and upward, forging ahead in true holiness, walking by faith and not by sight. But God, we have forgotten how to talk to each other because we have forgotten how to talk to you. Teach us to listen. Jesus said, let he who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. Return to you. We return to you our first love. Help us and, and, and guide us and give us another chance. You already have because we woke up this morning and we're here. Everyone who is here, oh God, you said, is supposed to be here. Thank you that we heard and we obeyed. Father, for those who are participating in Bedside Baptist and Mattress Methodist and Couch Christians, we're not passing judgment because you are there, right there with him. Did you not say in your word that we are to not forsake the assembling of brethren? Did you mean for us to always be in a building? Thank you that at one time you dwelt in the tabernacle. Then you dwelt in the physical building, but now... We are the temple of the Holy Spirit who dwells in each of us. So let us hear and be guided by you. Lead us and guide us and empower us by your Holy Spirit. I will bless the Lord at all times, the psalmist said, but he was in the middle of a warfare. So God, we are in a warfare. Thank you for teaching us and letting us know that all things work together for the good to those who love you, to those who are the called according to your purpose. So Lord, if anyone does not know their purpose, may the eyes of their understanding be enlightened that they may know the hope of their calling in Christ Jesus as we walk this earth, pilgrims through a barren land. Thank you for the gift of hospitality the gift of wisdom and knowledge and administration and the gift of helps. Help us and guide me to, to, to lead and to, to, to be hospitable to that foreigner who now resides with yours truly in a place who does not speak English. But thank you, oh God, that you have taught and you teach us that you, when we surrender, you release the gifts of language. Thank you for releasing Espanol in mío, por favor. Gracias, Dios. A bendito a Dios, Jesucristo. Gracias. So, Lord, now, as your spirit is present and moving, we watch and we wait. And we want to trust you because we sure can't trace you. Thank you for Pastor Tunstall, his ministry. Continue to strengthen him and guide him and each other, deacons and trustees and nurses and doctors and first responders and, and ushers, thank you for them. Lord, we love you. Thank you for comforting us, knowing that you are with us and guiding us. In the spirit of worship, we continue and give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. We are here to worship and then we will depart to minister in the name of Jesus Christ, the line from the tribe of Judah. Amen.
scripture comes from the book of Jude, Jude verses 24 and 25 as we will be wrapping up our series on Build Yourself Up, reading it from the New International Version. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. I want to continue the book of Jude and uh, put a, a little bit of an introduction there in your program uh, because I thought it would be good for you to know a bit about this man, Jude, and what uh, church history teaches us about him. I, I should note, just for the record, that Jude was one of the books of the Bible that had a hard time being accepted as canon, being accepted as part of the actual scripture, and uh, went through a lot of uh, different um, transitions, if you will, uh, before it actually became um, accepted by the majority, the strong majority of the Christian community. And then when the Bible was actually uh, canonized, put together uh, as a whole, uh, Jude was, uh, and I think under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, admitted into the canon. In fact, the canon is complete, um, but it took Jude probably the longest uh, time to get uh, accepted worldwide uh, as part of the uh, scriptural canon. And there are several reasons for that. I can't go into those right now, but I do want to note that it is, as I say to you in this outline here in your introduction, uh, Jude is the uh, English form of the name Judas, 
and he is mentioned as one of the uh, biological brothers, meaning one of the daughters, one of the uh, sons of Mary. Mary had sons and daughters other than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one begotten of God the Father. The others were by her husband, Joseph. And so he's mentioned in Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. I have that in your introduction. And Mark chapter 6, verse 3, uh, Judas is mentioned there. And uh, it is this Jude that we know today as being uh, this half-brother, Jesus Christ. And in John chapter 7, verse 5, we see that he did not believe that his half-brother Jesus was the Christ. And then we read after having, uh, after the resurrection, we read in Acts chapter 1 verse 14 that he does believe he, he's converted. And that actually is the, the way of all Christians. There is first this unbelief. There's this first this, uh, I'm not sure. There's this, this doubt. And then at some point there's a conversion. If you, if you will allow Christ to work in your life and hear what the scripture says and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, it actually leads to conversion. And that is indicated, as I said, in Acts uh, 1.14. And also another indication is in uh, Galatians 1.19. Uh, it's also referenced as one of the support scriptures regarding James, the other brother that Jude mentions here uh, in the text at the very beginning. So I want to try to look at uh, some of the things that Jude does. Uh, as I mentioned in your introduction, he is the first one in the New Testament uh, that identifies Michael as the archangel. We'll see it later in Revelation, but Jude is the very first one of the, of the epistle writers that identifies the archangel Michael. And of course, uh, Michael's gonna have uh, significance uh, in the latter days. He's the one that actually is assigned to uh, the protection of the believers. And so although the uh, Antichrist is going to reign and it's going to have his way, there's still going to be an archangel uh, assigned for our protection. Uh, my, my hope is that I'm already gone. I'm hoping that the rapture has come and that me and you and we've all been caught up in the air. But there are going to be some believers that are still going to have to go through some of the tribulation period and Michael's job then is going to be uh, part of that protection for them. So Jude gives us some insight into a lot of different things, but what I want to focus on today, particularly as we're coming to the last uh, of Jude's writing, the, the very last two verses, we want to look at uh, him having told us in verses 20 through 23 how to build ourselves up and then he's starting to conclude that thought now with these instructions. So uh, to build yourself up, he tells us, and this is the first part of your outline, uh, you need to be with him who is able to keep you from falling. Uh, that's why he says that to him, I like the New King James Version says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Uh, this is important because uh, Jude also told us in verse 14 about uh, the one that um, Adam, who was uh, Enoch, who was the seventh from Adam. So he mentions Adam in his, uh, in his uh, epistle to us, and he mentions Adam part of it because he wants us to know Enoch was the seventh generation from Adam, but also he just brings up the name of Adam because Adam was the very first one to fall. He was the one God gave the instructions not to eat of that fruit of that, that tree, and, and he did eat. And he, he, he is the beginning of the fall. And so when Jude now says, now to him who's able to keep you from falling, he's saying, you don't have to make the mistake Adam made. All of us are descendants of Adam. Whatever your race or ethnicity, whatever your sexuality, we all are descendants of Adam. And he's telling us now, don't make the same mistake Adam made. And throughout all of human history, every generation has made the same mistake Adam has made. And so what uh, Jude is saying, and uh, the late Gardner Taylor used to tell us, Jude gives us these instructions, and then he, uh, the instructions that he gives us are impossible for us to do ourselves. No, no generation has ever been able to stop doing what Adam did. So then God says, so this is the answer to that. 
God's solution to that is to make sure that you are with him who is able to keep you from falling. You can't keep yourself, but you can be with the one who is able to keep you from falling. Uh, I, I, I've told you before, I used to curse, but you know what I never did? I never cursed around my dad. And so when I was with my dad, you didn't have to worry about no curse words from me. And it wasn't, and I had gotten bigger than him and stronger than him, but I was, I had respect for him. It was just, it was just a matter of respect. And this is what God said, if you, if you respect the name of Jesus Christ, God then will say, I will wash away all of your sins. It's just a matter of respect for his name. And so he tells us, if you want to keep yourself from falling, what you need to do is be with him. He's talking about Jesus the Christ. If, you, if you're with him, he is the one that is able to keep you from falling. Doesn't matter what the temptation is. Doesn't matter how long you've been involved in it. If you will get with him, the Christ, Jesus the Christ, if you will get with him, he is able to keep you from falling. So he's giving us, this, this is how you build yourself up. This is how you get stronger. This is how you learn how to deal with uh, difficult issues in your life. If, if, you gotta, if you're dealing with a bully at school, if you're dealing with a bully at work, you, what you need to do is get with him. Because he's the one that's able to keep you from falling. He'll keep your marriage from failing. He'll keep your health from failing. Uh, he, 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 allow, he allows you to go through some things, but, but he'll, he'll be there with you and he will keep you. Jude doesn't tell you you won't have no problems, but he does tell you, he promises you this, he'll, he'll be there with you in the problem and he'll keep you from having the problem overwhelm you. Your, your problem might be tough, it might be serious, it might be too hard for you by yourself, but he said, but I'll, I'll get you the help you need. He'll keep you from falling. Jude makes this very profound uh, declaration to us. This, this is the one that is able to keep us from falling. All, all of us have a falling problem. All, all of us have some uh, temptation problems and, and some issues and uh, some uh, what we call uh, secrets that we keep. And those uh, things that only, only you or only you and some others know about. J Jesus Christ said, I, I know about it and I'm able to keep you from falling into that. What he knows about us does not stop him from loving us. In fact, it helps him to love us even more because he knows he can deliver us from it. He's able to keep us from falling. I like this from Jude because uh, Jude it was end up, he, he was in a situation just like you and I where there was a point where he didn't think Jesus could do it. In fact, when you read uh, John chapter 7 verse 5, it says none of his brothers believed him. He was in that point of unbelief, but our God is saying, even in your unbelief, if you'll be with me, if you'll be a, uh, Jude teaches us, if you'll be a part of the family, Jesus uh, healed that man's boy, and, the, and Jesus said, yeah, you got to have faith. And he says, you got you to believe. And the man says to Jesus, I believe, but you, Lord, I need you to help my unbelief. Because there's a part of me that still doesn't want to believe. There's a part of me that still wants to rebel. There's a part of me that wants to reject. I'm hoping to talk to you some about that rebellion uh, next week. But there's a part of each one of us that, uh, that is rebellious. And Jude was one of those that were rebellious. And so he said, the way to overcome that is to get closer to him. Uh, you, you, want, you want a great family, then you get you and get your family closer to him. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. We got to get that relationship with him right. Then he tells us the second thing you need to do is right here in verse 24. Uh, he's going to present you before his glorious presence, before the presence of the Father, without fault. 
I need you to ask the second part of your outline. Uh, be uh, with him that can present you before the glorious presence without fault. If, if you don't fall, then you won't have any faults. The people that fall have faults. In fact, that's what makes us fall is our faults. And so he's the one that can present us without any fault. And he can present us without any faults because he keeps us from falling. Faults and, flaw, and, and falling, they, they, they're twins. They, 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 they're the opposite sides of the same coin. Faults and flaws go, fall and go together. And so our God is able to present us without fault. It is a, a, a God that washes away all of our sin. He forgives every sin and then he washes it away. And when, when you and I are presented before God the Father, we will be without any faults. The blood of Christ would have cleansed us thoroughly and there would be no, no fault, no blemish, no spot or wrinkle, as James calls it, in us. Our God will present us without fault. Well, let me get to what, how, how this makes Christ feel. This third part of your outline, and, and this, this is a good thing for us. Uh, the third part of your outline says, we rejoice that our Lord Jesus is glad to present us to the Father with great joy. It gives God, our Christ, great joy to present us to the presence of the Father. He basically is saying, uh, this presentation is like uh, God uh, saying, Jesus Christ saying to God the Father, uh, this is the new part of your family. It was like when I was able to uh, present my wife to my family. It is uh, a presentation that, that somebody has been added to the family and now they are a new part of our family. God is going to present us with great joy. This is important for you and I to know that our God, he isn't mad that he had to die for our sins. He's actually glad that he did because now he's able to present us to the Father. If, if he didn't die for our sins, he wouldn't be able to present us to the Father. The only way he could present us to the Father is that we would be without fault and without blemish and that he would have, would have already gotten rid of all the failings and flaws in us and now we're able to be presented without spot or wrinkle. And it makes our Christ glad. He is, he is overjoyed to present us before the Father. And so... Jude says, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his glorious presence without any fault. The, the glorious presence of the Father without any fault. It is Jesus the Christ who is the one that will, has already died for our sins. All we got to do is be willing to accept him respect his name and accept him he then presents us without fault or flaw and this my brothers and sisters is the joy of jesus christ that he's able to present those that have accepted him he's able to present them before the father our god is looking forward to the day that he presents you and i without any fault or flaw it would be the first time in my life, the first time in your life, that you had no faults and no flaws. I mean, I, I think I look pretty good right now. But uh, imagine what it's going to be like with no faults and no flaws. I'd probably just be in the mirror all day long. Just look at it. Just, just, no faults and no flaws. Th that you, you're going to be glorious. You, 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 you're going to be perfect. And this is what Jesus Christ does for us. It, it, Paul says it, it is for the perfecting of the saints. It, it, it's making us better, making us the very best we can be. That's who Jesus Christ is. That's what he does for us. He perfects us. And then he's going to present us faultless. 
and flawless before the throne of God and say, God, this one has accepted me as Savior, and now they are part of the family. And, and, and all the angels in heaven are going to shout hallelujah. Another person is coming to the family of God. Hallelujah. We, uh, I guess six years ago now, we had our first grandson. And I remember uh, when he was born and uh, counted all the fingers and toes and make sure everything was there. And, and it said, hallelujah. Because God, God added another addition to the family. And that's what God does, uh, that's what Jesus Christ does when he presents us before the Father. He says, Father, this one has been brought into the family. Hallelujah. The, the scripture says it this way, it just says, with great joy. Uh, this is what Jesus Christ does for us. He presents us with great joy. Well, let me get to the last thing that we'll be finished for today. Uh, it says, uh, verse 25, uh, and this is the fourth part of your outline, to the only, and I like you put the only wise God, I like how the King James Version puts it, the only wise God, our Savior, uh, who, the one that saves, now you, it gets a little technical here, and again, I told you Jude had some uh, issues about being uh, part of the canon, because this was one of the verses that some Christians had struggled with, because it refers to God as the Savior, and most of the time, we refer to Jesus Christ as the Savior. Well, uh, Jude says it actually is God the Father that saves, but he saves through his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, only God saves. But he saves, he is chosen to save through Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the one that died for our sin. And if we didn't have that sacrifice, we wouldn't be eligible to be saved. And so he says, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, power and authority, through, somebody say through. That's how we get it. We get it through Jesus Christ. That's why we honor and praise the name of Jesus Christ, because that's our only way through. You can't get through any other way. The way through to the, to, into the presence of God is through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And he, has, uh, he is now the one that makes salvation available to us. It's through Jesus Christ. And he becomes our Lord. And so uh, Jude is very technical in saying, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He, he, Jesus Christ must be the Lord in your life. Uh, like, like a landlord, the landlord has the final say of what they're going to do with their property or whatever. Well, Jesus Christ, uh, you, you become God's property, and Jesus Christ has the final say. He actually is the landlord. He's the one that, that died for your sin. He, he actually is the one that owns who we are. And when we accept that and acknowledge him as our Lord, then he actually becomes the one that presents us before the throne of his grace. And when we don't accept him as Lord, then there's no presentation to the throne of God the Father. The only way you get it to be presented to God the Father is through his son, Jesus Christ, and that Christ must be your Lord. We have to voluntarily make him Lord of our lives. And I want to close by saying this. For him to be the Lord of your life, the way he becomes Lord in your life is that you have to be convinced, convicted, and converted that he is able to deliver you out of every situation. I'm, I'm glad that I, I am certain, if I don't have nothing else I'm certain about, I'm certain that my God is able. He, he's able to wipe the tears from my eyes. He's able to pick up my bow down head. He's able to heal my body when it's sick. My God is able to save my soul from death. My God is able to deliver me out of all, all kinds of troubles and weaknesses. My, my God is an able God. 
And the whole Bible is a testament to God being able. He was able to deliver Daniel out of the lion's den. He was able to deliver the Hebrew boys out of the fiery furnace. And our God is able to deliver us. We got an able God. Doesn't matter what your problem is. God is able. He's able. He's able. Our God is able. Uh, that, that, that's why I love him. That's why I serve him. That's why I'm determined I'm going to be with him. I know he's able. He's able to what? Able to do whatever you need done. He's an able God. Our God is able. I'm going to stop right there. Will you stand with me? Maybe somebody here today wants to accept this Christ. If you do, we have a decision card on the back of your program. We want to ask that you would make a decision today. And if you want to accept Christ, just check that first box. I want to accept Jesus Christ today. Any, any decision you make for Christ is a good decision. We're going to have the choir lead us in the selection, and then we're going to offer the benediction today.
keep us from falling. The great shepherd of the sheep, the firstborn from the dead, the blood of the everlasting covenant, even our Savior Jesus our Christ, to him be the million majesty, glory, and power now, henceforth, and forever. Let us all say amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.